The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret I have made them. Hey everyone, I'm Brent the Middleman, your middle-aged middle manager from Middle America in a Midlife Crisis, back today with another video in my series of videos about the religious references and mythology in the HBO series Raised by Wolves. As you could tell from the title and the intro, today I'm going to talk about the book of Genesis and look for any clues that may help us understand what exactly is going on in this bonkers show. So slap on your fig leaves and grab some forbidden fruit, because we are about to get biblical. I started the video with that verse because it really reminded me of season one of the show. A land seemingly devoid of life, ruled over by an angry god who had lost faith in humanity. There was evidence that something once lived there, but now all that remained was giant snake skeletons and radioactive plants. The only living creatures were living deep underground and only came to the surface when Mother took down the Mithraic Ark. Oh, and that verse I read? The last line is, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. The cave paintings we saw depicted someone leaving Kepler for Earth in an ark. Was this the show's Noah? Did Soul or the voice we heard let him leave for Earth, knowing one day humans would evolve enough to decipher his scriptures and return? Let's take a look at another verse and substitute the word Kepler for Earth and the word Soul for God. Now the earth, or Kepler, was corrupt in God's, or soul's sight, and was full of violence. Soul saw how corrupt Kepler had become, for all the people on Kepler had corrupted their ways. So Soul said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for Kepler is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and Kepler. So make yourself an ark. God, or Sol, then gave Noah explicit instructions on how to build this ark and told him to bring his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, along with two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with him and every kind of food. Instead of having Noah and his family float around on Kepler for 40 days and 40 nights, he sent them off to another planet, which Sol somehow knew they could survive on, uh, but that's a video for another day. I have put forward the theory that on Kepler, the dark photons in the planet somehow allowed biomechanical androids to evolve, and then they either created humans or humans evolved alongside them. I think that Sol was one of the first, and Noah was an android of his creation. When he sent Noah to Earth, he had him take not only animals, but each of the different kinds of human beings, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. We know there were Neanderthals on Kepler because the hooded figure was holding a skull. This is what seeded life on Earth. Now, what happened to Noah and the other android traveling with him, we do not know. Maybe they came back to Kepler and Noah's wife is the million-year-old android father brought back to life. Or maybe she was Noah. Then the humans grew and evolved on Earth to the point where they could decipher the scriptures to help bring androids to life on another planet. But just as these humans did on Kepler, they used it for war and not for peace. I'm starting to think Sol knew this would happen and did it intentionally so that the androids could eventually take over Earth and rid it of humans, successfully making them a multi-planet species. Because they lived so long, a million years was nothing for them to make that happen. If season one of the show really followed along with the story of Noah and carrying on the human race after God destroyed the planet, then season two definitely closely resembles the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Let me start with this passage. Then the Lord God formed a man from dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food, and not at all CGI. Okay, I added that last part. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it you will certainly die. 
Now, before we unpack this, I just wanted to read one other verse that really caught my attention when God was going to make Eve to be with Adam. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. This really jumped out at me because we have seen Mother use her powers to make the kids fall asleep in season one, and we have seen her open up their flesh and remove their trackers and then close them back up. We also saw Mother's tears bring Campion to life when he was stillborn. This really makes me think that God or Soul was some kind of necromancer or had very similar powers using the dark photons, which I think really solidifies my theory that an android or Soul created humans and not the other way around. Okay, back to the garden. In season two, we have heard a ton about the tree of life and how the orphan boy in an empty land will use the sword of light to grow the tree, and then everyone who eats from it will become pure. I theorized in my last video on the Mithraic, which I'll link at the end, that I believe that eating the fruit from the tree of life on Kepler will cause the humans to devolve, which Soul or the androids believe is the purest form of humanity a form where they cannot wage war and destroy the planet and themselves. In Genesis, the serpent tricks Eve into eating from the tree of knowledge, and it causes God to curse humanity and the land. Maybe eating from the tree of life on Kepler will cause humanity to regress back before Eve ate the fruit, when humans were pure and had no shame. My other theory is that the serpents on Kepler act as avatars for the voice from season one, and just like the serpent in the Bible, it is trying to trick the humans into growing the tree of life and eating from it by promising a peaceful kingdom. This will cause humans to devolve into the creatures we saw in season one and no longer be able to control the androids. The show may be asking the question, what if God was the serpent? and purposely tricked Eve and then Adam in order to see if his creation would listen. So what if Soul is testing humanity, and humanity just keeps failing, over and over, planet after planet, cycle after cycle? The last part of Genesis I want to look at is the story of Cain and Abel, the firstborn children of Adam and Eve. I think that their story may also be a clue as to what we are seeing on Kepler. Cain was the firstborn and worked the soil, he was a farmer. Abel was the younger brother and kept flocks, he was a herder. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, which was huge portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord really liked Abel's gift, but Cain's, not so much. This made Cain angry, and he really wore his emotions on his sleeve. The Lord asked Cain why he was so angry. If he just gave a better gift, then he'd get God's favor. But if he keeps bringing bad gifts, then God said, Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. But Cain wasn't having it, and asked his brother to join him out in the field. While out there, Cain killed Abel. The Lord came to Cain and asked, Where is your brother Abel? And Cain said, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? Yeah, God didn't like this answer, and said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you were under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. So Cain left for the land of Nod, which was east of Eden. Cain's family then went on to invent tools and weapons, and some of them were also killers. I bring up this story, because what if the voice we heard in season one is the show's equivalent of Cain, living in exile in a land where nothing grows, cursed. So he develops weapons, like necromancers, to get revenge, and he uses humans and their evil nature to destroy planets. Maybe he's the one who killed the android father rebuilt, and caused the destruction we see all around the tropical zone. And the electromagnetic field was a last-ditch effort to protect that part of the planet. When that happened, perhaps he found a way to get his instructions for building the necromancers to Earth, where Noah had thought he had safely escaped to restart humanity. And part of those instructions were to get a necromancer back to Kepler, so it could birth a serpent to be its avatar. But mother and father flew it to the other side of the planet, keeping the voice from being able to control it. But the voice has planted its own believers in the tropical zone. Marcus and now Paul are human weapons working for the voice. 
I think that Sue may even go to the voice to try to get help for Paul, and they will somehow take down the protective field, allowing the voice to finally get its revenge. Well, it wouldn't be a middleman theory video without an out there theory to end it, so there you go. And thank you for everyone for hanging in there for this longer video. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the other videos in this series. And click on the links here if you want to watch my video on why I think Campion and Paul are Romulus and Remus, the boys who were said to have actually been raised by wolves. Or click on the other video to hear all about the Mithraic. Once again, I'm Brent the Middleman. I'll see you next time.